Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship, and we're traveling all around the country highlighting ministries that are serious about just that. I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh, the executive producer and the show host. Today, we're in Liberty, Kentucky, visiting the Galilean home. And with me is the founder, Jerry Tucker. Jerry, thanks so much for letting our team visit you guys here today. Well, thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, what an amazing ministry. Uh, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about how you and your wife founded the ministry uh, a few years back. We were married in 1963, and we were childless for seven years, but we really wanted children, so we adopted a little boy and uh, with um, yeah, that's a few physical uh, disabilities, and after that, it just seemed like it just snowballed. We adopted uh, two Sioux Indian girls and then a family of four kids, two boys and two girls, and just one right after another. And we moved down here to Kentucky in 74, and we had about 10 or 12 children with us. We eventually had two biological daughters of our own. Our real kids, as the other ones would say, who's your real kids? They're all real. <laughs> Make them all real, real kids. But I'd have to add them up. I think I have 30 or 32 adopted children. But they're not our children anymore because they got six grandkids. So and the mom passed away five and a half years ago. And uh, her final words on her deathbed was, Dad, don't quit. Don't ever give up. And those words echo around in my head continually. So. We interviewed quite a few people so far, and uh, a few of them um, have made the promise to keep the work going, too. Charlie Daniels is one of your supporters and a lot of Southern Gospel artists. Charlie's our biggest individual supporter, yeah. yeah. You, too, can see how the Lord is using the Galilean home to share the love of Christ. Stay tuned. to help, um, to help anybody in need, and to love. That's always been mom and dad's number one thing. I think the heartbeat of the ministry is certainly for kids, for boys and girls. They have brought them in from many different countries, and uh, I have a, a camp that I operate in Somerset, and they have brought so many boys and girls to our camp. We want to help those that need help, and love those that need love. I mean, that's basically um, the, the foundation of it. God called Jerry and Sandy to love on children and to give them a place to be and that developed into this mega campus and ministry uh, across all these different things that we do now. The main thing that we all try and, and desperately make our focus is the children and whenever things get tough and, and you know like things always do tension gets high and whatever we try to remind each other that you know we're here for the children and let's keep that our focus. I do what I do but I, because I think God has given me a mothering spirit. I feel like we're here to make a difference in the children's lives. Not only do we make them good citizens, I try to get them when they leave here to be able to say, I got my Christian grounding here at the school. Try to help them to see that ministry is a way of life, not just to go out and make money to better themselves, but that they need to be involved in ministry. That there's always room for another child to come into the home. There's, there's never not enough room for kids, never. Well, there's always opportunities um, with the residents to, to share, to uh, tell them about Jesus. I have devotions with the girls that I um, oversee. Just workers sharing together with each other. Uh, we rub shoulders with a lot of people here. 
I first heard of the Galilean home through friends of mine. They had the newsletter, they had visited several times, and they had nothing but good things to say about it, so I got very interested, looked up the website, and really liked what I saw, and I decided that's something I wanted to do. What I like most about being here is my friends and teachers, they're pretty much family, and uh, the work here, it, you learn a lot. <laughs> I like how we're all close-knit, I mean we're all like, like a family almost. It's kind of nice to be able to have that relationship with each other. There's always room for one more. I guess Jerry and Sandy, they've, they're my grandparents and I mean they've always been willing to give to somebody. Like I've never seen them decline. Like if somebody's asked them, can I have something, they'll be willing to give whatever they can. They're really nice people. I mean to do that is a really big thing to us here. Over the years we've had all kinds of you know, different people come and go. But I know me as far as used to living at the home, I've had a lot of people that have come to live and work at the home and that I have really, I don't know where I would be without them. They have shown me uh, the way to live, have shown me by example. The love and the support is probably the best part of it all because everybody's just so, we're so close-knit and everybody's so together all the time and supportive. Well, thanks for continuing to watch Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship, and we're in Liberty, Kentucky, visiting the Galilean home. With me is the founder, Jerry Tucker. Jerry, let's talk a little bit about evangelism. You know, the church is commissioned to share the gospel to every living creature. How do you guys share the gospel with folks that you come in contact with? For years, we traveled and sang in churches and uh, for about 15 years, so that was a big aspect of it there, but after mom died, we weren't able to do that anymore. We cater to the Pee Wee State Prison up in Louisville, it's called Pee Wee Valley. The babies go up to see the mother every Thursday. They spend two, two and a half hours with the mothers along with our helpers who take them up. So these girls of ours, most of them are, are volunteer Amish and Mennonite young ladies, are able to share the gospel, the ladies in prison, and watch these girls, how they act, how they, are with the kids and so forth. And then down in our Blessing House, we have a lot of people come through there. That's where all the handicapped kids live. Just the kids themselves are evangelizing more than uh, any big name evangelist could ever do. Hands-on evangelism. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. I agree, it goes hand in hand. It's word and deed. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just talk about Jesus without demonstrating the right. love. And that's what Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by the love you have for one that's another. That's right. That's the common foundation here at the home. It's loving on people, right? That's it. The slogan, there's always room for one more. Faith, hope, and room for one more. You know, the scripture, faith, hope, and love. Well, she's changed it around to faith, hope, and room for one more. That's the name of one of her books she wrote. She wrote two books. And, and uh, she was good at coming up with little cliches and little things. Marketing and, calls and slogans. Yeah, slogans. <laughs> and she named every building. Every building on our property has a name. Angel House, Fox, Josh House. M&M House, Martha and Mary House, everything is, was her naming and not mine. Well, it's great to see the vision moving forward and uh, workers coming up behind you to continue to, to carry that torch. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews and, and hear about how they're sharing the love of Christ and people are coming to a saving knowledge of who Jesus is and what he did on the cross for us. Stay tuned. I think one of the greatest things 
is the Born Free Ministry. They go to prisons where that kids or babies are born and there's nobody to take care of them. They are actually almost cast out and the years past and still today have many babies in their ministry. We care for them while they are incarcerated and I guess you could say plant that seed so then when they do go home that they will flourish and hopefully, you know, that seed will grow in them of what they were taught here by our workers. And then they have others that cannot even uh, feed themselves and they turn no one away. And this uh, is really a heartbeat of the ministry here. We have some handicapped kids that are bedridden who have to be cared for 24-7. Some kids who are not even handicapped. They just need some love. Well, there's always room for one more. We're going to have these children. We'll take them in and help them. Whatever needs they have, we're here for them. We'll always have the children open the doors. There's always going to be room here. We were shown the love of God here. Um, we have people that have worked here for 20-something years that love on these children like no, no one else can. Um, and it takes somebody really special to work with, especially the handicapped children, because even they're children in their minds, but they're adults. They're big people to have to, to um, care for. We just treat them all. It's a family situation. We love them and care for them. And just through that, I think we show the love of God. It always feels good just to be a part of the baby's life, even though we probably won't hear from them again. Just being able to take care of them at a young age and try to give them all the love and care that they need that their mommies can't. I have a Keys for Kids program that I'm going through with them. It just deals with things that we um, encounter in daily life and um, how to deal with them according to the Word of God. And they often share struggles and I'm able to um, try to take them to the Word of God and, and work through them full of fun, lots of hard work, different scenarios, different children with different capabilities and incapabilities, all of which are a blessing. Um, it's about learning how to work hard and enjoy the blessings in return that God has given you just from being able to have the experience. Only that when you love what you do, God really helps you to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. I'm grateful for that. Just someone just praying for us, uh, just uh, uh, being willing to support us through prayer. It's a lot of hard work. It is a lot of difficulty, but uh, you just need to come and, uh, and see what goes on. So the ministry in the Galilean home has reached almost around the world, and we know that the work that they're doing is a very good work. We have a community service club, and it's called Living 410. And we go out in the community and serve the community. And I take the high school students, we serve with them. I've been raised to love and to care and to, um, to accept people no matter what. Um, it's unconditional love. So I wanted to give back the same way my parents did. Hey, thanks for continuing to watch another episode of Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship. I'm Pastor Chuck Reach, the host and the executive producer. With me is Jerry Tucker, the founder of the Galilean Home. So discipleship's a big word. I understand you guys have a Christian academy here on campus. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we started the school 25 years ago. We had become strongly convicted on Christian education, that the type of education we wanted for our children. So we, we started a school. This is back when you could do these things. And uh, before that, we had tried before that, and we run into too many roadblocks, so we moved to Montana. You can homeschool and do anything you want, basically. We came back and uh, we started the Galilean Christian Academy 25 years ago, and mostly for our own children. And then, of course, our grand, as our kids grew up and got married and so forth, and then it was grandchildren. Then we started taking in staff children and outside children because it was 30 miles to the nearest Christian school from the rural Kentucky where we live. 
and uh, it developed into quite a school. We belong to the Kentucky Christian School Athletic Association. And we have a, a girls volleyball team and a boys basketball team. We have kids that graduate and go off to different colleges and uh, win scholarships. My daughter Ebony is up at Cincinnati Bible College right now on a, a volleyball scholarship. Well, that's awesome. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some of the faculties, even the principal of the school, and, and hear about how God is using the Galilean Christian Academy to raise up the next generation of Christian leaders. Stay tuned. I want to find all that you have for me. I want to forget. That's what's awesome with the school. We're here as teachers, but we also have that time that we're able to sit down, we're able to share biblical beliefs with them, we're able to share our lives. We can take that time and talk to the students. They can come to us if they have a problem, they can ask us questions, they can say, you know, what does the Bible say about this? What do you need? You know, what can we do with this? We can sit down and share them scriptures and go through and, you know, and that's what's awesome with this school and that we can do that. We do the Alpha Omega curriculum and uh, it is all biblically based. For example, we, uh, we do not teach evolution in, in school. We teach that uh, everything, man was made by God himself in, in his image. Whether we're doing history, English, math, science, anything like that, it is biblically based. We go from the Alpha Omega program and we have these workbooks that we do for each subject. And at the beginning of every book, we ha it's an introduction, and all of them kind of have Bible verses that relate to the topic on what the book's going to be about. There's people we go out and do different certain community service groups with the school, and everybody's really getting to know God more personal. We have a chapel service every Tuesday. Kids are amazing, all of them. Uh, my favorite part about it is probably chapel on Tuesday, where we get to worship just go up to the altar sometimes and just with our friends and it's grown a lot. We had a revival and we just do a devotion every morning and try to pray for others and stuff. It's good. It's Christian education for kids around here that don't might not want to go to public school. They want a Christian education. They don't want to drive to uh, bigger cities. My husband and I both feel like this is where God wants us to be, and so to be obedient to His calling, I guess that's why we do it. It's just part of our life. I was born into it, and I just feel like that's where God wants us. We are the third largest employer in this county um, because of the many aspects of the ministry with the Bread of Life Cafe, the school, the Blessing House, the Angel House, and then on into the Trading Post downtown. It's a thrift store of the uh, excess goods that we have that we might not be able to utilize here, but we take them to that store and provide affordable clothing like a Goodwill. There's not a Goodwill here in Liberty. So people have an opportunity. They might not be able to buy clothes for their kids, but now because generous supporters sent us so much that we couldn't use, that now we can sell that and use the financial gain and also provide a ministry um, in our surrounding community. So there's just so much going on here. The Bread of Life Cafe, there are many opportunities there to talk about the home and talk about Jesus. I had promised this to mom that I would help continue the work. And I, pr I pray that as, as long as God allows me to, that I will fulfill that promise to her. There's lots of kids that don't have homes. I mean, they take in kids that nobody else wants. Satan will try to discourage in any way that he can, and uh, we see that. If, you, if your heart's really here, he'll attack in any way he can. But we gotta keep the focus. What lies ahead of us, uh, we don't know. There's tomorrow will be another challenge, but we, we, uh, we face it because we got a God that's greater than the challenge. Anyone that we come in contact with, our vision and our goal, we want it to be that we can make an impact on those around us. 
to care for those who um, aren't able to care for themselves, uh, the least of these. I often remember Mom Sandy saying, we don't need to feel sorry for any of the children that are here. We need to feel sorry for those that did not make it. Thanks again for watching another episode of Revelations. It's a series on evangelism and discipleship, and by now, we're hoping you've had a couple of revelations. God is still working, and there's a part for you to be playing in the body of Christ. Jerry Tucker, the founder of the Galilean Home. Hey, by now, if the Holy Spirit was nudging in the heart of somebody who's watching on getting involved, what are some of the things that they can practically do to support a ministry like this? Well, of course, the first thing is prayer. We need prayer more than we need anything. In this day and age, with the temptations that kids have out in the world and so forth, we are not a licensed facility, never have been. So we are a faith ministry. Financial support, of course, that's what it takes to live. We need all the financial support we can get. We have a good volunteer program, and um, which really helps against payroll, because we still have a lot of people on payroll. So there's three areas, really, that you can focus on is prayer, number one. Finances is what it takes to pay the bills and pay the light bills and feed the kids and so forth. Volunteers, we have a lot of work teams that come through the summer too. Uh, a lot of work teams, volunteer work teams that come to do all different kinds of construction projects and different things. We have about 22 acres and plus a farm, so there's always yeah. something to do. Yeah, we have 22 acres and then next door we have a 60 acre farm, which really helps. And we own a restaurant at which we employ a lot of the handicapped kids who are able to work. We have one young man who's been with us for 20 years from Afghanistan who has no hands and have blown off in the war with the, with the Russians. He's a busboy and he's as good or better than any busboy in the state probably. And he plays he, basketball. Oh yeah, he plays basketball too. He can shoot some pretty good three-pointers. This is when he was in school. He's, he's 30 in his early 30s now. A married man. He went home to Afghanistan for a few months. A couple years ago, and got married. He's trying to bring his wife and his child. He has a, ba a boy, a young boy, bringing them over soon. He's been working on that for a year now. It's hard. To Talk to him about that last night. We're praying hard. for him. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews and, and hear about ways that you can get involved in supporting a ministry like the Galilean Home. Stay tuned. Prayer is one of the greatest things. The Bible talks about our prayers being bottled up. And so if they pray, not only can they give, receive a blessing here, but they can receive a blessing in the, in the world to come. The big things you can do is just word of mouth. Tell somebody about it. If you like it and you love it, you might not be able to financially do it, but talk to somebody else. Talk to your church. Talk to your youth group uh, at the grocery store. Hey, this awesome place is taking care of kids and taking care of people, and that you might want to check it out. And then the Trading Post is where we uh, take any of our donated goods that we're not able to utilize here at the Galleon. Um, we can take them there, and then we can still benefit from them financially. And there's also financial support. Um, we run solely on donations. We do not take government funding. And we rely on the faith and obedience of God's people to help the ministry here. And He has always, always provided, always. They are always in need of donations, always. Well, the prayer support is really, really important. Um, we need a lot of prayer. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work opportunities. Uh, there are work teams that come and do um, just a day or a week of projects around the home. There's the volunteer system where they can come for um, three months or more and volunteer. I'm a short-term volunteer. I just called up Dawn one day and I said, I'm really interested in what you're doing. What do I need to do? She sent me all the information I need. I applied for four months. I come here. I work wherever they need me. Mostly I work in the Angel House and the Blessing House with the Born Free Ministry and then the Handicapped Children. I do what I do because I feel very strongly about volunteer ministry. I just couldn't get away. I just couldn't. I, I couldn't leave. And when I did, I always had to come back. Um, I just love being here. The Lord called me to it and I love it. The main reason that I do what I do is uh, like I tell the kids a lot, there's 52 reasons that I come to school and that's what we've got in school. I do 
my job here because I care about the kids and it's a way of serving them. They, I appreciate all they do and they care a lot about this place. If you want to get involved, I really encourage you to go visit the Facebook page or the web page. Sign up for the newsletter, it's awesome. Come and check it out for yourself and I tell you, the thing that I always hear from people when they come, you can't get the Galleon home out of your heart once you've been here. I'm just very thankful. I'm just really thankful that I had the chance to come here and be blessed and I had a lot of problems before I came here, but being here has been so helpful and great that it's, it's amazing. I try to do everything I can to make so that if someone is interested that they can make it possible. To learn more about our ministry, visit us on our website galleonhome.org or call us at 606-787-5120. Well, I want to thank our viewers for watching another episode of Revelations. And, and Jerry, thank you for letting our team spend a couple of days with you guys oh, here. Yeah. Enjoyed having you. What an amazing team you have. And there's a lot of folks in a lot of key places. And it certainly takes people to do ministry, right? It does. It takes a lot of people. A lot of people. You're a good, faithful overseer. And uh, we're just impressed with your ministry. I want to take a chance with our viewers watching to pray with you and ask God to continue to bless the ministry and take it to the next level. Okay. God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much that Jerry and I can pray together with our viewers watching in one accord in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we ask you, Father, for wisdom from above to uh, show us how to take uh, the next step with this ministry, to continue to love these children that need a demonstration of the gospel, uh, the widows, the orphans. That's what you said pure and undefiled religion is. And Lord, you said uh, they'll know you're my disciples by the love that you have for one another. So I pray as the church may look on at a ministry like this, be stirred up and fired up to take the next step to uh, demonstrate the gospel and to co-labor together as we co-labor with you uh, before your glorious return. So we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless the Galilean home, Jerry and all the staff, the board of directors, the volunteers, the whole team, Lord, that is being your hands and feet. And we ask you to bless him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thanks for watching this episode. I want to encourage you one last time to take a look at the website. It's galileanhome.org. And until our next episode of Revelations, may you and your family be blessed. Thanks for watching.